moving on to my last example of finding the derivative. This example is y equals negative 2x minus 5. And of course, the first step is just to find the derivative. Now, I want you to make a note about the notation here. Every other example has given us function notation, f of x, g of x, h of x, so on and so forth. This is just in equation format, where we have y equals. Whenever we have y equals, the derivative notation that we should use is this dy divided by dx. And so this is just another notation for the derivative. We should use this notation whenever our um, equation comes in this format, y equals, just to stay consistent. We use the other, the prime notation, when they give us the problem in function format. So make sure you're keeping your notations consistent. Beyond that, our steps are just the same. The first step is to compute this f of x plus h, meaning you plug x plus h into all of your x's in your function. So this is negative 2 times x plus h minus 5. Gives me negative 2x minus 2h minus 5. I cannot do anything more to simplify. So I move on to my second step, my difference quotient. So f of x plus h minus f of x all over h is the last piece that I just simplified minus my whole original function. Don't forget to put parentheses here because we'll have to distribute that negative all the way through all over our h value. And so let's go ahead and make that next step to distribute our negative. Therefore, we can drop the parentheses, and so things cancel out. My negative 2x and 2x cancels. My negative 5 and positive 5 cancels. That gives me negative 2h over h. So we can see that our h's cancel, and we're left with negative 2. That means we get to move on to our third part of this derivative. And so that is, we need to take the limit as h goes to 0. It's almost a trick question because it's so easy. We typically plug in a 0 for h. But look, there's no h here. So what does that actually mean? It means nothing. I don't have anything to plug it in for, so therefore my answer is what it is. It's just negative 2. So my notation and my answer here is dy dx is equal to negative 2. So what does that mean since there's no x value left over? Well, it means that my slope is consistently a negative 2 at any place of this function, which makes sense because if we take a step back and if we look at this function here, this is a linear function which means our slope is always negative 2. So all of this extra work here was unnecessary. We didn't need to use the derivative to come up with our slope. We should have just known that from the beginning since this is a linear equation. Okay, now let's see the applied part of this problem. So we want to find the rate of change dy dx where x equals x naught. Again, this is just another way of the homework trying to switch up the wording on you so you get confused. But remember, the rate of change is just a fancy way of saying slope. dy dx, we talked about it. That's just another way of computing the derivative. And where x equals x naught or x sub 0, that's just another way of saying use this x value. So, our rate of change was dy dx was equal to negative 2. So what we need to do then is we need to substitute in our x value, or in this problem, our x naught value. Well, we need to talk about the notation shift here. Whenever our problem was f of x, we use the derivative notation of f prime of x, and whenever we plugged in a number like 5, we did f prime of 5. 
that notation was pretty consistent and so no big deals there. Here, if we need to plug in a number, our notation is a little bit unique. It uses something that you've probably never seen before. So instead of doing this of five, what we need to do is dy dx evaluated at, and so that's what this bar here means, evaluated at, and then we use our x value, or in this case specifically our x naught value, evaluated when our x naught is equivalent to four. So my personal belief is this is not the best notation, but did I invent it? No. So can I switch it? No. We have to use the notation that's consistent throughout all mathematicians and all math textbooks and so on and so forth. So you must use this notation here. dy dx evaluated at this specific x value here. Just like in the last slide, it's almost too easy, which maybe makes you think it's a trick question. It's not. Typically, we substitute in our x value, but in this problem, we have no x value to substitute in for, and so our rate of change, meaning our slope for this, is going to be negative 2. And we already talked about why. This is a linear equation. Our slope is always our m value, no matter what point in question we're looking at. But again, the only new thing in this part here is this new way to represent this notation. dy dx evaluated at, that's what that line means, and then you need to substitute in your x value. So this finishes up my last example of finding the derivative.